So you're an attorney and you've decided to go out on your own. Now what? You need a plan and you're not alone. Join expert host Adriana Linares and her distinguished guests on New Solo. Tune into the lively conversation as they share insights and information about how to successfully run your law firm here on Legal Talk Network. Hello and welcome to New Solo on Legal Talk Network. I'm Adriana Linares, a legal technology trainer and consultant. I help lawyers and law firms use technology better. Before we get started and I tell you what's going on today, which is very cool, I'm going to go ahead and take a few minutes to thank our sponsors. Unbundled Attorney is a premium lead generation service that delivers exclusive leads directly into your inbox in real time. Looking to get more leads and grow your practice? Visit unbundledattorney.com today. Perfected is a legal-specific proofreading software that locates mistakes that neither spellcheck nor the most eagle eye lawyer can find. Try Perfected from IntelligentEditing.com. I also want to make sure and thank Answer One. It's a leading virtual receptionist and answering service provider for lawyers. You can find out more by giving them a call at 800-ANSWER-1 or online at answerone.com. That's www.answerthenumber1.com. I want to make sure and thank Clio, the world's leading cloud-based legal practice management software. Thousands of lawyers and legal professionals trust Clio to help grow and simplify their practices. Learn more at Clio.com. That's C-L-I-O dot com. Okay. So I'm excited to say that we're recording live from the Bar Association of San Francisco's first annual solo and small firm conference. I've got three local attorneys with me. I'm going to let them all introduce themselves. And we're going to tell you why we're here. And then we're going to talk about what we always talk about on this show, going solo. So let's start with Roselyn. Hi, Roselyn. Hi, I'm Roselyn Fairgreave, and I'm the owner of Fairgreave Law Office. And I've had my practice, my own practice for a little over three years. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Tony Chioso. I am the, the owner and uh, senior partner at the Chioso Law Firm, which is um, in San Francisco and in the East Bay. I'm Albert Thusen, owner of Coit Law Group of San Francisco. We have a plaintiff side uh, personal injury and employment practice here in California, as well as Oregon, Washington, and Nevada. And we're all here together because Albert and Rosellen are on a committee that helped plan this technology conference for solos and small firms, right? Yes, we have. Tell us a little bit about the goal, why we're here, what the committee wanted to do, and and how it's going so far. Well, the Bar Association of San Francisco has a very established solo and small firm committee. And we decided that this year we're going to finally have uh, an annual conference. So that's why we've gathered here today. And uh, we've been very pleased with the turnout, over 100 uh, attendees. It's very impressive. Yes, we're very proud of ourselves. You should be. And um, one of the uh, major themes of the day is learning how technology can help make uh, you a better, smarter, and faster lawyer. And that's why we've invited you to join us today. Well, right. I was here. I gave a presentation at lunch. It was great. Last night, Albert and Tony and their their compadre, Tom, which is not here, took me out. We had a great dinner and talked about the goals of the conference and the fact that Tony has just got on his own. Brand new. Brand new solo. 30 days today. 30 days today. So we thought it'd be cool to use this episode not just to talk about the Bar Association's conference, which is great, and the tips that we hopefully picked up from the presentations that we've seen today, but also to help Tony, because he's only been out 30 days, and and talk about how you went solo. Because Mary Ellen, you've been, I mean, Rose Ellen, three years solo. Right. And what about you, Albert? Uh, I've been on my own for two and a half years, and before that I did primarily defense, uh, insurance defense work for about 14 years. So the two of you went out on your own. Were you afraid you were never going to get a client? Absolutely. Definitely. <laughs> right? <laughs> and what happened? Uh, I got clients. Uh, I got clients, and they came faster than I anticipated, and uh, the ship is sailing, and we're thriving. And so when Tony came to you, because uh, so Tony and Albert are good old friends, been yeah. friends for many, many years, and Tony came to you and said, hey, I'm, you know, I'm thinking about it. And he said, but will I ever get clients? You said. You can do it. And so what happened? You've been out on your own 30 days. You got a client yet? So I had my first client on the second day that I told the world that I was going solo. And, you know, there's a lot of 
low hanging fruit. I think when you go first go solo, there's people who want to help you, and they're depending on your area of work. You know, I'm not just doing personal injury; I'm also doing estate planning. Um, there's people who are like, yes, I have always been waiting for someone that I know and trust that I can call and and get that work done competently with, and so. That's the low-hanging fruit that came in the door right away. And there's also a lot of people out there, they're looking to refer somebody. And so once they hear that there's some they know and they like who's gone out into a practice area that is necessary, that's something they're looking for, they're really eager to refer you. So I've gotten way more referrals than I thought I would. That's amazing. And, I, I you know, that's what always happens. Lawyers think they're not going to get Clients. Okay, so we've got some clients, but before we get too far ahead, let's talk a little bit more about maybe the advice that you gave Tony when he decided to go on his own, or Rose Allen, what you would if you ran into Tony in the past month, or what you've said to your friends who have gone out on their own. Like, what would be the most commonly asked question that new solos have given you? Well, of course, you know, where does the money come from? You know, where do you get clients? That's, uh-huh. that's of course, number one. Um, and then I think in second place, there are about a hundred things that are tied. Uh, where should my office be? Yeah, the nuts um, and bolts. Uh, what technology should I use? Um, how often do, do I, I need a secretary? Do I need a secretary? Do I need a receptionist? Do I need a paralegal? Do I need an office? And um, those questions are all to be answered differently for different people. But the best advice I received early on was keep it lean. And therefore, uh, that'll be one less stress you have as you move forward. And when your practice grows, you can take on new expenses as uh, they help your, your practice thrive. What about you, Rosalyn? Well, that was definitely my approach as well when I started, is really starting with a lean operation and then um, adding things. Because I didn't know what my practice was really going to look like, I ended up really focusing on solely doing employer side advice and defense. But at the beginning, I didn't really know that. I, that took some, some time. And so if you don't have a lot of commitments up front in terms of like monthly fees and things like that, then you have a little more leeway or a little more flexibility to be able to really build the practice that you want. And then once you figure out what you want, you put those things into then place. you can sort of hone it. Right. So you did no new solo prep, but Tony... I think you did some new solo prep. That's right. I had two guinea pigs that had already gone out <laughs> solo before me. And there's that old saying, if they can do it, I can do it. And that was, I think, at least half the battle for me getting over the mental block of leaving the very, um, I wouldn't say cushy, but comfortable job right. that I had and that paid very well. And we're living in a very expensive part of the world and have a small family and good God, who in their right mind would go from the top of their game to starting all over again? Did and anyone tell you you were crazy? Absolutely nobody told me Isn't I was that crazy. Isn't amazing? Everybody was so, so supportive from the start. I mean, so many slaps on the back. And that was leading up to me even giving my notice. Uh, just letting people know was such a big part of getting over the mental hurdle of what was going to happen. And, and it made it real from the beginning when I started telling people. And that's the advice I got from my friend Albert. He um, was really instrumental in giving me the support I needed to, to make the step. Uh, my view was you need to start telling people. If you, even if it's your wife or your parents or whatnot, you need to start telling people. Otherwise, it's just a dream. And once you start to tell some of your confidants, then unless you're a person that doesn't follow through, then you need to start. (laughs) I mean, and you don't want to, you don't want to be seen that way. No. And well, then you're not going to be very successful if you can't follow through. Yeah. If you tell people I'm going to do this, then the calendar starts running and you start getting close to the date where you have to give notice and then you start marching towards the day where you're opening up and then as soon as you open up and there's not a hundred people outside your door but the operation is moving and so as a friend very happy for Tony's uh, progress and uh, he's going to do great. Of course you are. So um, you started telling people you decided to make the leap you started telling people and what else did you do in prep? What did these guys tell you? What did they say? Make sure you... So the first thing that I did, the very first thing, and I swear to God, is not a plug for you, Adriana, (laughs) but the truth is, is that it wasn't just your podcast that I started listening to, but I started listening to podcasts and there's something to be said about hearing not just your friends that have done it before, but people from across the country that have taken that leap and it's working for them. And it was just 
there were times where I was sitting on a, we have the BART system out here, the subway, where I'd have my podcast in and thinking to myself, this is crazy. This is crazy. I'm, I'm going to start my own firm. You know, all of the fears that people have about not getting the business, how will it work? And I plug in my, my podcast, uh, headphones and it would start playing and everything would just, it was becoming real. That's and, awesome. um, that really was a big step. Then there's listservs. Were uh, you using local listservs or do you get on national listservs? Are you, what, like, what kind of listservs? So when you start putting your email address into certain services, they say they don't sell them or whatever. I don't know, but I started <laughs> getting emails happened. from everywhere. And, you know, some of them I unsubscribe to right away and others I actually use to fill in gaps about my bookkeeping and what software, again, a lot from your podcast, but what software should I use? And I didn't just pick one and go with it. I've tried several out for, for my client relationship management software. I think, can I interrupt you real quick? Cause I think that's really important. Did you tell me you, you had done, Roselle had done the same. Most lawyers will not take the time to sort of test the water. I interviewed Nate, uh, oh gosh, Nate. Why can't Nate's last name come to me right now? Nate's a powerful name. We could just leave it right okay. there. He Nate knows, knows who, he is. who he is. He's on the podcast. He's a client of mine and a good friend. And he actually took two weeks. And I remember in the podcast, I was like, two weeks? He goes, this was important. I took two weeks to literally research everything, all the products that are available. So I think, Roselle, you told me you had, you've done similar. Right. So I kind of at first just signed up for one. And then as I was using it, realized the functionality that it didn't have that I really wanted. And so then that's when I took the time to research everything. Because going back to my earlier point, like I didn't really know what it was I needed until I started using it yeah, and, and figuring that, out where the shortfall was. That's fair. Sometimes, um, and, and the programs can either have so many tools that you didn't realize you did need, but it, it's hard. So, so poking around in there is really, really helpful. And I think it's important that lawyers take the time to do that. So have you tested, you said you were testing out Back to Tony, you tested out some, or you did some demos, you probably watched some videos, and then that's important. Many different videos. Videos from accounting to how the software would work, and of course the reviews on all these things. And But there's only so much time you have. I was working right. at a high-stress job with lots of cases coming up for trial that I wanted to get set up for the next people that were going to come aboard and start taking them on for my old firm. And so I'm doing three jobs, just getting ready to launch my own firm at the start of the year. So there's only so much you can do. There's a lot of learning you could do after you launch. You don't have to invent everything and have everything perfect on day one. Yeah. You know, I think you want to have your website up in some form on day one and your business cards right. and your letterhead and things like that. But beyond that, you don't need to make any other decisions. And I'll just add to that that I really, I just jumped in with two feet into the deep end. <laughs> Rosalyn, without... you, you do it my style. <laughs> yeah, I really, I did. And, uh, you know, I think my first business cards were ones that I printed myself on <laughs> from like Word probably. But you something. had them. But I had them. And you them, probably and said, I... I just went out on my own. This is the only business card I have, but here. And right. nobody cared. No. They didn't care that you had printed, but you had them. Right. That's awesome. I yeah. like to analogize, um, you know, we've all practiced law for some time. And before we went on our own, I would tell people, it's like we're about to jump out of a plane. And you've been, for at least in my practice, uh, I had been learning how to pack a parachute for 14 years. And the day we started, jumped out of the plane, sure enough, the parachute opened. So felt real good. Well, listen, before we move on to our next segment, we're going to take a quick break. And I'm going to give you a couple of messages from our sponsors. Are you a family law, immigration, or estate planning attorney looking to attract new leads and retain more clients? Join hundreds of other solos and small firms just like you who use Unbundled Attorney to receive premium, exclusive leads delivered directly into their inbox in real time. To learn more about how their lead generation services can grow your practice, subscribe to the Unbundled Attorney Mastermind Podcast or visit unbundledattorney.com today. is an invaluable software solution for law firms of all sizes, handling all the demands of your growing practice from a single cloud-based platform. Clio enhances your firm with features such as matter and document management, time tracking, and even billing. Clio is an effortless tool that helps lawyers focus on what they do best, practice law. 
Learn more at Clio.com. That's C-L-I-O.com. Imagine how much faster you could work if you spent less time proofreading. Almost every lawyer wastes hours each week proofreading rather than producing legal work. With Perfect It's American Legal Style, you spend less time proofreading and have more time to focus on substantive matters. It's easy to use and there's no training required. Try Perfect It for free from intelligentediting.com and start saving time on proofreading today. Is your firm experiencing missed calls, empty voicemail boxes, and potential clients you'll never hear from again? Enter Answer One Virtual Receptionists. They're more than just an answering service. Answer One's available 24 seven. They can even schedule appointments, respond to emails, integrate with Clio, and much more. Answer One helps make sure your clients have the experience they deserve. Give them a call at 1-800-ANSWER-1 or visit them at answerone.com forward slash podcast for a special offer. All right, welcome back to New Solo. I'm Adriana Linares, and with me are... Albert Thusen, Coit Law Group, San Francisco. Tony Kioso, Kioso Law. Roselle M. Fairgrieve, Fairgrieve Law Office in San Francisco. Three proud solos. Um, so when we left off, we were just talking to Tony about going on on his own, but you sound like a pro. I mean, it's only been 30 days, but the advice you're giving and the things you've gone through, you actually kind of sound like a pro. Well, you have to own it, you gotta know? Own it. You got to own it. This is your, your life. It's my family's life. It's very, it's a big, serious step, but it's not all about the pressure. It's about what you're trying to get out of this. And for me, it was the right time in my life to make a change. And I wanted to do something positive for me. I wanted to own my own business. I'd, I'd set up other people's firms before, and it was time to set up my own and make it go. So we were talking about your new solo prep. So you did some research, looked at some software. Is on your list your office space? Because last night we talked about your office space, right? Yes. Let's talk about that. So if you come from the position that you're going to be as lean and mean as possible, you have some options. And one of those is is renting virtual office space. And again, I didn't have to reinvent the wheel to figure this out. You just need to talk to some people and find out what works for them and then think about would I be able to live with this. And so I would visit former colleagues at their virtual offices, which are all over the place. There's all different versions. And they had these plans where you could come in as often as you want and work in a shared space. You can have uh, them take your mail for you, answer the phones for you, all for a very reasonable price. And if you do need a, a, an actual office to meet with your clients or whatnot, just rent one by the hour. And uh, I've had no problems with it so far. And so we're in San Francisco. Probably your idea of a very reasonable price it's probably high compared to someone who might be listening to this in another market. And then it would be even more amazing how not high that price would be. <laughs> Good right? point. Good point. And the price is definitely vary just by a few blocks where you walk in San right. Francisco. It's a different price. Roselle, do you have, what do you have, your own office space, a shared? Tell us a little bit about your setup. She has a great office. <laughs> yeah, I have an office. So I spent the first 18 months working out of my home okay. and using conference rooms like here are the Bar Association in San Francisco. They oh, have rent rooms you can rent, so I'd of have course. depositions here. But now I do have my own office space. And it's it's a, a shared space in terms of like the there's a very large space and I rent, you know, an, an office. office within uh -huh. that space. And it has shared resources, like maybe a shared receptionist. Is there a conference room? Do you get I Wi Fi? I have oh. Wi-Fi. I have a conference room. My receptionist, I use Ruby receptionist. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. And I Ruby. have virtual assistants. And when I need people to come in, then they come in. And Where do you get your virtual assistants? So right now I'm using, there's this company started in San Francisco called Freedom Makers, and they provide their assistants are spouses, military spouses, oh, and they're located all over the country. And um, so you, Ooh, you Tony, can, write this. He's writing it down. <laughs> Tony's going. I like this. Yeah. So it's it's really great. And like my my assistant recently went on vacation, and they just pulled someone else in to fill in for her while while she was out. And, and are you using them for clerical tasks, for word processing, for what types of tasks do your virtual assistants get? Right. Clerical things, you know, calling people, making calls. I mean, really anything that can be done virtually, I try to get 
my assistant to do it. Um, I am pretty self-sufficient. I had worked for um, my 15 years of practice right before I went out on my own were with a public entity. So I was used to being very right. self-sufficient. <laughs> I mean, so I, you know, sometimes it's just faster for me to do my own thing. But Good. yeah, it's a great resource. What's your office space like, Albert? I uh, use uh, part of the Regis network. Oh, excellent. So yeah. I, I have a home base and um, my uh, services team there take care of my uh, mail and phone calls and things of that nature. Um, but I actually enjoy the freedom of working in other offices in the network outside of my own home office. Getting started, it was very important for me to maintain a paperless office policy. And that oh, allows good, me right. to work uh, whenever and wherever I choose. How are you paperless? Uh, I've got a pretty religious um, system in that um, every evening I do my scanning. It's mm -hmm. usually when I'm playing with my daughter. Great. In the morning, I do the shredding. Excellent. And uh, once a week, I uh, make sure I do, you know, electronic filing, if you will, mm -hmm. you know, taking your scans and relabeling them and putting them into the appropriate format. And uh, for me, after two and a half years, I've got less than four inches of paper mail I've kept. I love that. Tony, are you paperless so far, 30 days in? Yeah, there hasn't been that much paper for the <laughs> process yet. And, and uh, you know, along the same lines, though, the vast majority of my client uh, interactions are on the phone and they're on email. And there's just a few situations on the intake side where you're going to need to meet somebody and have anything executed. And it's it, really the challenge with the paperless office is just setting up the processes in the beginning. And then, but once you do that, or once I've done that anyways, it's been very easy to just duplicate it each time. I just started using DocuSign not too long ago. And so I'm a Google Apps for Business subscriber, well, and Office 365. And I forget, let's see what happened. I think through Google Apps for Business, I get 10 free a month. And then maybe it costs, it's, it's very reasonable. But anyway, long story short, I couldn't believe how easy it was because every, you know, come on, like I'm a technology consultant. Haven't I done this before? The answer was no, I didn't. I just would send a PDF file and and then I started sending not one single lawyer. And so my clients remember their lawyers who everybody says can't figure out how to use technology, but nobody's had a problem. So it's inside of Word. So um, this is Microsoft Word on the PC. I haven't figured out yet how to do it on the Mac because I just haven't had to. But anyway, inside of Word on the PC, you, there's a little, the store, the Microsoft store. So you go into the Microsoft store, you get the DocuSign app. It installs it inside of Word. Then you've got your Word document sitting there. You click the DocuSign button. It opens up on the right-hand panel a place where you log in, which I log in with my Google Apps for Business ID because that's how I get 10 free at least a month. And then it says, all right, we're going to send this over to DocuSign. And it just opens it up in a new window. So now it's opened up like in Chrome. And it's converted my document to, you know, a digital version. And then on the left-hand side... It has these drag and drop fields for an initial. So wherever I want an initial to go, I drag from the left onto the window, drag. It's got title, date, signature. And so I put a little, an initial at the bottom of each page and then the signature at the bottom. And my signature is already in there because I put it in the Word document and I email it out. And then DocuSign lets me know when someone has viewed it, and they let me know when they've digitally signed it, and we're ready to go. It's that, pretty awesome. That's pretty advanced. Now, I know the new version of <laughs> I'm Adobe. I'm a very advanced <laughs> consultant. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to my Stone Age stuff. No. Um, yeah, Adobe, Adobe has, a, has a very similar one, but I don't recall if it has those notifications that, that you get when someone has well, used it. And, but so. the thing is, you got to get it to Adobe. So that's an extra step. So try DocuSign. I think you'll find it's okay. really easy and you get some freeze with your, are you an office, a Google subscriber too? I am. And I was actually just going to talk about the Google voice. Oh yeah. Service. I use Google voice. Let's talk about it. Unbelievable. I wish I had been using it for years just for my own personal use. Um, so my firm number is a Google voice number. Mine too. And, and if I can't answer the phone, it'll roll over to my virtual office uh, receptionist Wait, which is also. where are you not answering your phone from? So where does it ring? So you've got a Google Voice phone number, which is your office number. Where does it ring? Well, I'm highly mobile, so it's going to ring on my mobile phone. That's right. And if I can't take it, it'll roll over to the, the Regis office. Or if it's after hours um, or before hours, and I, I decide I still can't take the call, um, I can choose to decline the call. It'll immediately give the caller my greeting, and I can actually listen to their message 
live. As they're leaving it. As they're leaving it. And I can get right back to them. And it also emails me a transcript. That's of, right. Of the, and it's just incredibly helpful to have that information. And it allows me to prioritize what I have to do right away. And if your contacts are in Google and you're logged in, like, so on my computer, right? So Google has my contacts in it, Gmail, or Google Apps for Business, I should say. It'll tell me the caller ID if it's someone I already have in a contact. And I think it also does it through their entire network. So sometimes I'll get Bob Law Firm in, you know, and then it, and I don't know them, but Google knows it's the caller yeah. ID. So if it even, I guess what I'm saying, member, it even has Google. Picture right. And... Which is pretty cool. Yeah. What about you? What do you use for phone? Um, for I also have Google Voice. Excellent. Yeah. And it's free. It's free. Yeah. That's the crazy part. It's free too. Okay. What else is on the uh, going solo prep list, Tony? Okay. Um, so I enlisted the services of my, my chief marketing officer, who of course is my wife, Susan, um, <laughs> who is already the most amazing salesperson that I've ever met. Aww. And she really is. She is incredibly motivated and she's a wonderful salesperson. And so she started selling me even before we launched. And, you know, just what I'm saying is you need to engage everybody around you into your own success. And at least now in the beginning, again, I'm only 30 days in, but people like have been pro. very, very enthusiastic about wanting to help when they can. And so take advantage of that if you can. Let's talk for just a second since you mentioned your CMO. Um, and you also mentioned earlier, you get your website up and off the ground. Who you can name names if you want, or you can just say a friend or a company who built your websites for you and how much did you pay? Uh, you're talking to the person who built my website. Excellent. So uh, I went to GoDaddy and you they have their, um, law firm in a night service. It's pretty good. Pretty much. You know, they have many tabs on there. I took a lot of those. I have two tabs. I have my homepage and I have my contact page and that's all I need right now. Right now. Now, once I have more content, I'll upload that. I'll add more tabs. Right now, you just wanted a place to, for people to go because you can't not have a website. You're not legit unless you have a website. You're really not. All right. So you've got Google Apps for Business with your law firm name, right? And then you went into GoDaddy. You created a website. Did it help you attach it to your email or and the domain name? Did you buy the domain name through GoDaddy? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I'm not going to have figure all that out? To Tony at Gmail is not going to work. No, right? You, you it have to have work. your own. It's almost idiot proof. You know, awesome. it, it's just that easy. It's that There's easy. just, you fill in a few things and of course your credit card and, <laughs> and, and you click, you see, these are all things that add up to you making the, um, you know, the decision, the commitment to, to go solo. You start doing these things. This is one of them you do in advance. And as much as I thought I would have my, a badass website up and running even before I left, it just, there was no time. So I actually did it the weekend before I went solo I put it all together and hopefully it looks okay. And it like, looks great. Like we said, you just have a ha have to have a place for somebody to go. What about you, Rose Ellen? Um, so I you're three years in now. So. I am. Yeah. So I, I also felt like I was not, I didn't exist until I had a website. Right. And so I registered for a domain name right away and then kind of waited for me to get time to do it myself. And I never had that time. So ended up hiring a local, um, graphic designer who did my logo, designed the website. I had a copywriter, also a local person. Excellent. Who, you got good help. I did. Yeah. And I just, you know, it's like one of those things I'm, I'm all about getting help when I'm not able to devote time and yep. effort to something. And so, um, how much do you think you've spent? Just give us ballparks. So yeah, it was, get, it was, so they don't it freak was out. not, it was like, uh, I mean, it's been a long time now, but I want to say somewhere between three and four thousand dollars. It wasn't ten thousand no. dollars, right? It was mm -hmm. somewhere under five. Right. That, that would make sense. Yeah, very good. Well, unfortunately, it looks like we've reached the end of our program, but in a weird way, we never have to reach the end of a program with New Solo. So we're going to wrap up this part. We're going to call this part one. We're going to ask our guests to remind everyone uh, who they are and where they can find, friend, or follow you, whatever you'd like. And then we're going to come back in the next episode and continue this great conversation with these three amazing solos from San Francisco. So, Roselle, let's start with you. Remind everybody where you are, who you are, and where they can find you. I'm Roselle Fairgrieve. I have Fairgrieve Law Office in San Francisco. I'm an employer side attorney, and I'm on Facebook. I'm pretty active on Facebook. Um, Fairgrieve Law Office. I think you can just search and find mm -hmm. me. 
All right. Um, I'm Tony Kioso. You can find me at kiosolaw.com, C-H-I-O-S-S-O-Law.com, if you don't know how to spell Italian. I represent clients in estate planning, personal injury, and employment litigation. And I have to say, I, I can't believe that I'm giving my information out on Adriana's um, <laughs> You're famous. A- Adriana's podcast after having listened to it religiously for months <laughs> leading up to this. So thank you, Adriana. You guys are so sweet. Uh, this is Albert Thusen of Coit Law Group, San Francisco. Uh, of course, uh, anyone who's uh, listening to this probably know already knows how to use Google. I also have a uh, page on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn at Coit Law Group, and my Twitter handle is at Coit Law Group. And uh, again, Adriana, thanks for inviting me uh, to uh, join you guys. No, you guys invited me, remember? True. That's I very can't. true. You should <laughs> thank, thank me. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> all right. For all you listeners who want to learn more about what you've heard today, make sure you visit New Solo on Legal Talk Network. Make sure you follow us on iTunes, Twitter, and Facebook. We're going to end this episode, but we're going to come back. We're going to do part two with these three amazing lawyers from San Francisco. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Join us next time for another great episode. And remember, you're not alone. You're New Solo. Thanks for listening to New Solo with host Adriana Linares. Tune in again to learn more about how to successfully run your new practice solo here on Legal Talk Network. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.